Let me start with a question. How do you feel when you're close to nature? Say, a waterfall, or uh, maybe a beautiful uh, riverbed, or a nice sunny morning at a beach? My observation is we humans feel happy whenever we are close to nature. There are many tools we have, like thermometer to tell you what is the temperature, compass to tell you what is the direction. But is there a tool which tells you how close is your place to nature? The only answer I could find is bees. If there's a lot of radiation, you'll not find bees. If there's a lot of pollution, you'll not find bees there. If there's less of flora, fauna, oxygen, you'll not find bees there. So guys, let's welcome bees in our cities. Not for bees, but for happy cities. And how did I get into the whole bee thing? Like most of us, I was a bit concerned about the use of chemicals and pesticides uh, in farming. So I made a bottle tower prototype where uh, you put bottles one on top of the other. It saves water, takes less space, and gives me organic veggies. I was getting a good supply of chilies and mint, but there was a problem with tomatoes the tomato flowers were not converting into tomatoes. I was a bit worried, so I did a quick Google search. And the fact I got to know was something which was very impressive. How many of you eat tomatoes or tomato ketchup? Well, I'm sure the fact will help you guys as well. It's only bumblebees which do a good pollination for tomato plants. And they were not traveling all the way to the fifth floor of my apartment. So I wanted to know more about bees. And I took a beekeeping course. And every lesson I learned from it, when I compared it to my corporate life, I thought I should share it with you guys. And that's why I'm here. That's the bumblebee pollinating the tomato plant. Now, look at the landscape which these bees have divided themselves. They have different unique strengths. Rock bees can fly higher, uh, indica bees can stay in darker areas, and floria bees are ruling the plains. They have their different strengths. Since our childhood, we've been taught to focus on uh, what went wrong, keep learning something new, whereas I would want to urge you guys to understand, know your strengths, and then work on those. Because good leaders know what are their strengths, and then they choose the landscape to compete. Most of the species have sting, and they make hexagonal shape uh, hives. But there is this species which is stingless and makes circular hives. And they are the smallest one, so they can get into bigger flowers as well as smaller flowers. Most of the medicinal plants have smaller flowers, very small flowers, like tulsi. And the honey which these bees make is that's why considered to be most precious in Ayurveda. So it's OK to be different. You do not follow the herd mentality and do what others are doing. If you know your strength, it's OK to be different. Now, let's understand how a beehive is organized. Every hive is in this way. Top portion is the honey. Side portion is the pollen, which they eat for protein source. And bottom portion is their broods and eggs. And that gives us this lesson that in order to be successful, you ought to stay organized, guys. Organized in your personal and professional, both sides. Let's get to know the bee family, the queen. Every time contemplating on how to make the hive work and function successfully. What's the weather outside? How much eggs to lay? How much food is there in the hive? What is the security issues for the hive? And she runs this whole hive flawlessly, very successfully. And that sometimes uh, leads me to think that are organizations run by women more successful than organizations run by men? I don't know. To add to it, there are thousands of bees in a good hive around 
40 to 60,000 of worker bees continuously nurturing, nourishing the babies, getting nectar to the hive, constructing the hive. The impressive fact is all the worker bees are female bees in the whole hive. Yes, there are drones, male bees, and they do nothing in the hive. They absolutely do nothing. Even the feeding part is done by the worker bees to them. They are meant for one important purpose. They meet with the queen once in a year, and then they die. But when there are challenging times, there is no nectar outside, less food inside. The first thing worker bees will do is stop feeding the drones and let them die. And in the context of corporate life, that is what I want to tell you guys. If there are rough times and organizations need to lay off, then these will the people who don't add value to organizations to be let off first. So don't be drones. Value add to whatever you are assigned to or whatever you are doing or whatever you're supposed to do. There is also a progression pattern which I uh, saw. After being in the cell for a few days, the first thing the bee does when she comes out is the housekeeping job, cleaning and all other part. After a few days, the gland which secretes royal jelly develops, which they use for feeding the babies. So they become nurse bees from the normal housekeeping stuff. Then there is another gland which develops, which secretes wax. So then they become architect and construction bees. And after having known the hive uh, better, then they get the guard bees or the police-like authoritative role. And finally, the most important role to add value to the hive is to get nectar, so they become foraging bees. And this pattern shows me that you first develop on the skills before you take your role. Well, if you are given a role, your dream role, but if you're not able to fulfill it, or you don't have the enough skills to do justice to it, will you be happy? I personally will not be. Forget about the organization. So let's upskill ourselves before we get through that dream role we want. Now, good leaders put their best foot forward and do the best they can. I'll try attitude doesn't make you a good leader. And that's one of the examples I want to share with B is that they have the best architecture I could see. Over centuries of learning and evolution, they found that hexagonal cells are more helpful. Wax is more precious than honey for bees. Why? Because when they eat four kgs of honey, only then they can make just one kg of wax. So they don't want to waste wax. And then they need honey for their bad times, so they need as much space as they can. And hexagonal as a shape reduces wastes of wax, if you see how much wax is wasting when you put circles together. And it also stores more honey. It's not about just the best architecture, the way they communicate. How do bees communicate? There is a bee dance which happens in the hive. A foraging bee comes into the hive, follower bees are watching it, what is happening? If the bees is da bee is dancing in eight fashion, that means the flower is beyond 50 miles. In circular fashion, within 50 miles. How long is the bee dancing is the distance they need to travel. Which angle to the sun is the bee dancing is the direction they need to fly. They also get samples of the nectar and the pollen for the follower bees to taste that this is the flower you need to go to. No gap in the communication, what you ask for and what is delivered to you. And good leaders understand that communication is the key. Communication is the basis of any soft skill you would want to have. At the same time, there are some flowers who've customized themselves or adapted for some specific species of bees. That is the bond they have developed with their customer. And leaders are always customer focused. Not just that, after you've delivered something, what is the byproduct of it? 
An experiment done on a farmland where they covered a portion where bees cannot get in vis-a-vis -a, -vis a portion which is open and the yield in the open part where bees were doing pollinization was 80 to 200 percent more without using fertilizers or any of the jargons people talk about. They are the best friends of the farmers. Even the quality and the taste of the fruit which was developed was much better than any other mechanism of pollinization. We've heard about different uh, tastes of honey or types of honey, neem honey, jamun honey, mustard honey. How is that possible? Bees are very particular about the task they take in hand. Go to the flower, take the nectar, come back. If there is nectar remaining, go back to the same flower, come back. If there are other flowers on the same plant or tree, go back to that flower and come back. And that's where I was thinking, they're doing single task with a good focus. Is that something which is also advisable for us? Research shows that humans, when they focus on a particular task or a single task, the results are better than you doing multitasking. I'm not concluding anything over here. It's on individual personal way of how do you multitask, but this is what they are doing. Good leaders always have a succession plan in place. Tomorrow if they are not there, how are things going to work in their absence? If unfortunately Queen Bee dies or she's become old, who decides who will be the next queen? It's the worker bees who decide who is going to be the next queen. The last fertile eggs, few of them, five to six, which the queen has laid, worker bees will fill additional royal jelly in it, elongate those cells and cover it. The only difference between worker and queen bee is queen bee has a complete development of the reproductive organs, which others have not got because of that lack of royal jelly in the cell. So they put enough royal jelly. The first bee which comes out from the queen cell will be the queen of the hive and she'll sting other cells so that all other queens die in the cell. If coincidentally there are two queens which come out at the same time, the worker bees will ensure that both of them fight and the winner bee will be the queen of the hive. And sometimes that leads me to think, should students select who is going to be their teacher for any subject? or should employees select who's going to be their next CEO? It's just an idea, okay? And if you've selected your queen, how committed you are to it. This is an amazing news I saw. For two days, these bees were stuck to the car and a bee expert came. He opened the dickey where the queen was stuck, flew the queen and flew the whole hive behind her. Another amazing fact is they are very, very committed, guys. It's not about me. It's about the whole hive. And in case of risk, they are ready to lay down their lives for the hive. So any task which is given to you, any responsibility which is given to you, if you do it with sheer commitment, it is evident and visible. Visible in the way you do it, visible in the deliverables you have after you've completed that task. And based on the commitment, your fun level or the way you enjoy that task also increases. Tutankhamun stone was opened and they found honey in it, which was 3,000 years old and it was still edible. How surprising. Today, no food industry company can tell you that my product can last for 3,000 years and you can still eat and you know, survive after eating that. So any product we design, we plan, have a futuristic vision to it. Not necessary, it'd be short-sighted. Focus is something which is very important for us in our lives, guys. Bees, as soon as the sun is up, they go out for their foraging part. Before it is down, they are back in hive. Focus is sun, flower, hive. And so does good leader also ensure that they keep focus on their goals. Because your focus moves away from your goal and your goal moves away from you.
So stay focused in life. Queen bee is very, very particular about cleanliness in the hive. She will not lay egg if she finds the slightest dirt in the cell. So the worker bees are continuously ensuring the hive is clean. They also have propolis in the hive, which keeps the hive antifungal, antibacterial, and sterilized all the time. That's where I believe that we humans, in order to take good decisions which result to successful outputs, we have to ensure we have a healthy body and healthy mind. Very important fact I got to know while my training is that 80% of the pollination done by bee is for our food. If there are no bees, there'll be no food. And today, if all bees die, within four years, the species of us will be extinct. So it's not just for them, it's for ourselves as well. We need to ensure we take care of bees. And that's where something clicks to me is we should have our organizations or our skill sets such that the very existence is important, not just for the organization employees, but for, for the customers as well. It pains to see this, where one of the towns in China, all the bees have ran away because of the pollution level there and they're using humans to do the pollination with the help of brush, adding cost to the farmers. But more or less, it's development on the cost of nature, which is the dead trap, guys. So let's have ideas which develop, but not on the cost of nature. So my only sure humble request would be, let's friend with plants and let's friend with the bees what minimum we can do is grow bee-friendly flowers. One of the examples is mustard, which we use in our day-to-day -day cooking. Just put that in your uh, flower pot or the gardens nearby, because it is a very good source of protein and nectar for bees, because not all flowers have nectar or all flowers have pollen. So this is one of the good mix which helps them. At the same time, it's summer, so let's make uh, water stations for bees. Uh, they cannot swim, so would request to put some pebbles or stick uh, in those water stations so that they can land and then drink properly. Back to my bottle tower experiment, I got a hack. I used my mobile in vibration mode, touched the flower, it opened the pollen sac and pollination happened, and I started getting a supply of tomatoes as well there, and I'm enjoying them. So here's uh, wishing you all to be happy and be the lead, guys. Thank you so much.